A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are fellow citizens with the Holy Ones and members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the capstone. Through him, the whole structure is held together and grows into a temple sacred to the Lord. In him you are also being built together into a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Verbum Domini. Acclaim him, all you peoples. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Strong is his love for us. He is faithful forever. Go out to Blessed are they who have not seen me, yet still believe. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Dominus vobiscum, et cum spirit tut Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Ioannem. Gloria Tibi Domine. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Verbum Domini. Laus Tibi Christe. We welcome this morning Father Emmanuel de Chejero from Tanzania, serving in Florida, bringing a group here to EWTN. He says all of the area there watches EWTN, so we need to be very careful. 
Today's Feast of St. Thomas the Apostle is really about faith, what faith is. And when it comes down to it, it is only because of St. Thomas that we have verified proof that the Son of God, Jesus Christ, retains his wounds the nail marks on his hands and his feet, his pierced side. We would not know that unless there was evidence of St. Thomas from this passage. And there is something special about these nail marks, these wounds of Jesus' crucifixion. And this feast teaches us ultimately about what believing is about what faith is, that faith is believing without seeing. Immediately after the resurrected Lord came, the disciples were witnesses to Thomas of his resurrection. Ultimately, he didn't take it on their word. He wanted to see for himself. Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands and put my finger into his nail marks, put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Remember, the only apostle that was present at the crucifixion was the apostle Thomas. No, rather the apostle John. Fold you. John was the only one who didn't abandon the Lord. All the other apostles had abandoned the Lord. And we only know about this through St. John's Gospel. John gives us the account of his wounds and of Thomas, of his disbelief. Notice that a week goes by after St. Thomas expresses his unbelief. What must have had been going on with the apostles during that week, especially St. Thomas? Surely they were still talking about it, the event of the resurrection, seeing the resurrected Lord, what he might have looked like. Remember what the Lord had gone through in his scourging, what he might have looked like from the cross, But in his resurrected, glorified body, all of those wounds were gone. The only wounds that were left were the nail marks on his hands, his feet, his side. It's hard to imagine that St. Thomas was not talking with the other apostles and disciples during that week and not grappling himself with what they had proposed to him. After that week was over, the risen Lord came in their midst. And notice the Lord went directly to Thomas, not to anybody else, but he went directly to Thomas. He knew, he knew exactly what was happening in Thomas's heart. He knew Thomas's unbelief. Jesus said to him, put your finger here and see my hands and bring your hand and put it into my side and do not be unbelieving, but believe. The unbelief of Thomas was restored by his encounter with the risen Lord, with his putting his hand into his side, touching his nail marks. Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI says that the Apostle Thomas's case is important to us because it comforts us in our insecurity. And it shows us that every doubt can lead to an outcome brighter than any unsecurity. Basically, what that means is it's easy for our faith to be shaken. 
And if those closest to Jesus, the risen Lord, if their faith was shaken, what makes us think we're going to be any different? What makes us think that we're not going to have trials? Sometimes lack of faith, disbelief. When we experience that lack of faith in our lives, when we feel like the candle of our faith has been smothered out, remember St. Thomas. If we allow the Lord, the Lord can extinguish that disbelief in us, and he can be the one who reignites that torch, that torch of faith within us. Last year on this date, Pope Francis said, to meet the living God, we must tenderly kiss the wounds of Jesus in our hungry, poor, sick, imprisoned brothers and sisters. Study and meditation and mortification are not enough to bring us to the encounter of Christ. Like St. Thomas, our life will only be changed when we touch the wounds of Christ present in the poor, the sick, and the needy. How true this is. When we break out of ourselves, when we break out into our own little realities sometimes that we create and we break out and go out and touch the needy, encounter the suffering, the abandoned, the poor, isn't it then that we touch the wounds of Christ? We encounter who Christ is, this, him suffering in his poor. His wounds, Christ's wounds, are still fresh. They're not dried up. His wounds are still fresh in his poor, in the suffering, in the abandoned. There's a story of Blessed Mother Teresa, Calcutta, bringing a dying man in off the street. And this man had lived on the street for nearly his entire life. And he'd been walked past, walked over, probably stepped on. And in her famous acceptance speech of the Nobel Peace Prize in 1979, she said of this man, as that man whom we picked up off the drain, half eaten by worms, and we brought him to our home. The man said before he died, I have lived like an animal in the street, but I'm going to die like an angel, loved for and cared for. That's going out and touching the wounds of Christ. Someone once said to Mother Teresa, Mother, how are you going to save all of these people in Calcutta? Tens of thousands of people who are dying on the street. You think you're going to save them all? What was her response? One at a time. I'm going to go out one at a time in the street and pick them up and love them and bring them in. That's Mother Teresa's charism. When it comes down to a nutshell, touching the poorest of the poor. Because she believed that she was touching Jesus. She believed that she was encountering the risen Lord in his poor, in his abandon, those that were forgotten about. We do not have to go very far to encounter the wounds of the Lord. 
the Lord is suffering in the wounds of his people. We do, we do not ultimately need a theology course, someone to tell you all about the wounds of Jesus in order to learn about Jesus' suffering. The Lord is waiting for us to encounter him. And perhaps the Lord is waiting for us to encounter him in those that are closest to us. Those people within our own families, those people within our own parish communities, our friends, nursing homes near you. Jesus is waiting for us to encounter him. All we need to do is recognize him as Blessed Mother Teresa Calcutta, that she had enough faith to see Jesus in the poorest of the poor, to reach out, to touch the poorest of the poor, and to embrace them as if they were Jesus himself.